St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the Superior General of the Brazilian Fathers, Father George Smith. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for the televised daily Mass, for the intentions of her friends, and for the souls in purgatory. The daily televised Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking you in Calgary, Alberta, for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we prepare to enter into communion with our Lord Jesus Christ, in and through the sacred heart of Jesus, which we celebrate today in a special way, we acknowledge our need for God's loving mercy and compassion in our lives. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we rejoice in the gifts of love we have received from the heart of Jesus, your Son. Open our hearts to share his life and continue to bless us with his love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice to our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses 
that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in them, and that person in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in them. The word of the Lord. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is all your iniquity, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord's kindness is and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He continued, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, 
all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Every year, 19 days after the great Feast of Pentecost, we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And we Catholics have been doing so since 1856. Until just recently, I spent most of my priestly ministry serving in Catholic universities and colleges. And I can tell you that devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is not widely known to Catholic university students of today. But to those of a certain age, and I include myself, the image of the sacred heart of Jesus, often depicted in Christian art, as a flaming heart shining with divine light, pierced by the lance wound, surrounded by the crown of thorns, surmounted by a cross and bleeding, that image is a familiar one to many of us. To today's university students, it's more likely to provoke comparisons to the vampire stories by which so many of them seem to be fascinated. But for many of the viewers of today's Mass, I think it's likely that the image of the Sacred Heart is a comforting one, even a grace-filled one, and perhaps, I hope, bears memories of happy homes united by the bonds of family, faith, and prayer. Even for those of us familiar with the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, I think it's a value to spend just a moment reminding ourselves of the depth of the theology behind this devotion. Theology, first of all, is God's word addressed to you and me. It is God's self-revelation. And so the pierced heart of the crucified Christ is God speaking to us. It is the love of God laid bare for all to see. In a sense, we could say that the sacred heart of Jesus is a poem of love that issues forth from the heart of God. And that's precisely what St. John is saying in our reading that was proclaimed today. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. But in order to receive this word inscribed in the flesh of Jesus, we have to stop in front of it. We have to linger there for a while and look at the wound made by love. To contemplate the sacred heart of Jesus, we do not look with a passing glance, but with the gaze of one utterly overwhelmed by love. Each of us is called to be an adorer of the sacred heart and each of us is called to contemplate the Sacred Heart in the prayer of our own hearts. In other words, the Feast of the Sacred Heart is an invitation to each of us to be drawn into mystical contemplation of God's love for us in Christ Jesus. I said a moment ago that theology is God's word addressed to us, and so it is. But theology is also our word 
addressed to God. It is our response to God's self-revelation. But what can we say to God that has not already been said? Do you ever wonder about that when you pray? I know I do. Do you ever ask yourself, what could I say that could make any difference to God? What could I say that God doesn't already know? Even when I confess my sins to God, it's not as if God doesn't already know them. What could I possibly say in prayer that God might find interesting? Well, within this feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we find the answer to those questions. Through our devotion to the Sacred Heart, we pass over into the prayer of Christ to the Father. If we have the courage to take it on, we can enter into a sort of apprenticeship of silence by which we begin to let the heart of Christ speak in us and for us to the Father. So in this sense, it's not that I have to think of anything original to say to God. I simply have to allow Jesus to speak within me to the Father. The wound in the side of Christ speaks to the Father on my behalf. It is our word addressed to the Father. The letter to the Hebrews puts it in this way, Christ is able for all time to save those who draw near to God through him since he lives forever to make intercession for them. Through our devotion to the Sacred Heart, we allow Christ to speak in us and for us. And our prayer takes on meaning and depth far beyond what our mere words can describe. In fact, our prayer through the Sacred Heart of Jesus becomes an act of love. Let us stand now and offer our prayers and petitions to Almighty God. For the church, may all Christians everywhere develop a deep personal love of Jesus who shows forth in his humanity God's perfect love for us and our love for God our Father. We pray to the Lord. For a renewal of Christian values in our world, may those responsible for government love with compassion the people they serve and remember and remain meek and humble rather than powerful and pr proud. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have lost heart and are without hope, that they may turn in their troubles to Jesus Christ, who will give them rest for their souls and the resolve to face life with renewed courage, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For greater love and trust in our community, may we love one another since love comes from God and be sensitive to one another's needs, especially the desire to belong and to feel wanted by the community, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And for God's blessing upon our country on this Canada Day, that we may continue to promote and witness to those values that have made our nation a beacon of peace, generosity, and justice throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord Father, you love us in your Son, and in love we have made our petitions to you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, look on the heart of Christ, your Son, filled with love for us. Because of his love, accept our Eucharist and forgive our sins. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lifted high on the cross, Christ gave his life for us, so much did he love us. From his wounded side flowed blood and water, the fountain of sacramental life in the church. To his open heart, the Savior invites all people to draw water and joy from the springs of salvation. And now with all the saints and angels, we praise you forever. you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying you destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them 
and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 